your host, Taylor Patrizzi. Hello, and welcome back to the Hatter's Bridges Show. I'm Taylor Patrizzi. I'm just as excited as all of you are to see the Hatters back in action this weekend against Jacksonville. We'll talk to Coach Hughes about our most recent win against Warner, as well as our upcoming opportunity to go 2-1 this weekend. We'll also get a chance to talk to Assistant Athletic Director James Ricky Hazel about his role in athletics as well as social media. Speaking of social media, we'll look at our Twitter Instagram pages to see what's going on with all of you. And finally, we'll end this episode with our Catch a Pie series. Stay tuned to see which students take on the challenge this week. Last week we had a great home win against uh, Warner University. Uh, it was a great way to bounce back from our earlier loss of the, of the game and, and earlier loss of the season. And I felt our kids played very well for the most part, especially in the first half. We came out, uh, got on right away. I think the first eight possessions of the game, our defense had three, had four three and outs and four uh, interceptions, which is a great way to, to start the game defensively. And offensively, we scored on half of our possessions. And generally, if you score on 50% of your drives, you're gonna lead the nation in scoring. So we were really pleased about the first half. I thought we came out and really dominated the game. Second half, not so much. We kind of got off to a slow start in the third quarter. Um, we gave up a couple of drives in the third quarter, um, mainly because our penalties on ourselves, some personal fouls, kept drives alive. Uh, but we were able to defend bad, bad field position and held them only to, to 15 points when we could have given up a lot more. Offensively, we got going late and put a drive together at the end of the game to kind of seal the game. And then what I was really pleased to see when we got the ball back for the last time with about four and a half minutes left, we were able to run out the clock and secure the win. Thanks for that, Coach. Now let's hear from Assistant Athletic Director, Ricky Hazel. My name is Ricky Hazel. I am Associate Athletic Director for Communications here at Stetson University. Part of my job is working with our student athletes uh, on social media. Uh, obviously, there are a lot of different aspects to that, but just, just coaching the, the student athletes on how to handle social media, how to use it to their advantage, how, to, how we use it in the athletic department to help promote the events. Um, we, we do a lot, obviously a lot more in our communications office besides social media. It's just a small fraction of what we do, overseeing website, publications, game events, operations. I'm over uh, licensing and branding, uh, all of the merchandise that you can see in various stores and outlets across the area. And our online store, all of those things go through me for approval. Um, also have involvement with marketing and some of the things that go on with that and, and uh, sponsor fulfillment. So there's a lot of different avenues of things that uh, I do here at Stetson University. And the most rewarding part for me is, is working with our student athletes. Uh, it's, it's been a 25 year passion for me of, of working with great kids and seeing them go on and do great things. And it's, it's one of the things I really enjoy the most is when, uh, when our student athletes go on to bigger and better things, whether it's professional athletes or, or in whatever avenue they choose in their life. I've had athletes go on to be, obviously worked with guys like DeMarcus Ware and, and uh, many others that have gone on to success in the pros. Uh, to guys like um, uh, Wyndham Rotunda, who people wouldn't know by that name. Uh, most people would know him as Bray Wyatt for the WWE, has become a superstar with the WWE. Uh, had other, Michael Grimes was a player I had at Troy that, that uh, is now uh, works at NBC News in New York City. So it's, it's rewarding to see all of those student athletes go on to success in other fields and, and hope, hope to give them a little part of, of what got them going that and, and to see to see a stu former student athlete do well on television or in the media is uh, especially rewarding since that's the area that I tend to focus on and, and to make sure they're prepared for not only in the in their personal lives but you know to help with their professional lives and one of the things I always talk about with our student athletes is uh, the most important thing that they have is their name that's their own brand and that's what they have to protect so anything they do and say on social media will always be tagged back to their name. So they have to protect their name and have to protect uh, their image. And uh, you, know, you see professional athletes that uh, do bad things and tarnish their image and it, it, it's tarnished forever. It doesn't ever goes away in the, in the world of social media where you know everything that is said and done is uh, available for video 24 seven and, and pictures and somebody's always got a phone or a camera in your face. Uh, so you have to be on guard 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and, 
And that's one of the things I stress to our to our student athletes is you can never let your guard down when you're a student athlete because somebody is always going to have an agenda uh, and they may be trying to get a gotcha moment with a student athlete because it's uh, some some people are anti-athletic and so you never you never know when somebody may be out trying to get you so you got to be on your best behavior and on your p's and q's all the time and that's one of the things I really stress to to our students is uh, they have to focus and they pay attention all the time. Duda Havel. Wow, that's what I call catching a pie. Now while she cleans herself up, let's go talk to Coach Hughes for his final words of this segment. This week, we, uh, we progressed to conference play, our first conference game against uh, interstate rival Jacksonville. And Jacksonville kind of gives us a new look this year because they have a new coaching staff. Uh, um, Kerwin Bell now is not there. He's up at Valdosta State. And so their new staff has come in from Lenore Ryan. They're primarily offensively, they're primarily a uh, a run-based uh, triple option type team. Uh, they run a lot of wings. They do run some gaps games. They pull a lot of guards at times. Their quarterback is a very good athlete. He reads well. And uh, and you're always worried when you pack nine guys in there to stop the option, you know, that they throw it over your head with a play-action pass. So we're going to have to be extremely disciplined. And we're going to have to be very patient defensively because they're happy with getting three and a half, four yards every time they touch the ball. And they're not going to take a ton of deep shots. And so We've got to understand that we may be on the field just a little bit as we um, as we try to get them behind the chains and, and try to get them uh, off the field from a defensive perspective. Offensively, um, they run uh, their defensive coordinator, Rich Ellerson. He uh, was with uh, Arizona when they ran Desert Swarm, uh, and essentially, it's uh, it's two inside shade tackles with the with the center covered, and uh, their secondary they play pretty conservative to this point, but they do like to twist a lot. They're not big up front, but they're very athletic. They're very quick. And they capitalize on athleticism by using a lot of twists. Uh, and having not to this point been a big blitz team, uh, they've played two games as well. They're one-on-one -on -one just like we are. And so uh, what we're going to have to do is make sure that we are able to handle the twists up front. We're going to have to be able to run the ball effectively to make sure their offense stays off the field. And by that, I mean we'd love to average four yards a carry. 
Special teams wise, they actually faked two field goals last week. And so we're going to have to be on our toes on the special teams and make sure that um, um, we keep them contained from the standpoint they have a very good returner. And we're going to have to be very um, careful to make sure we don't allow him to break our contain on our coverage units. And in addition, we're going to have to uh, do a much better job returning punts and getting pressure on the punter this week. We want to create some short fields so that uh, uh, give our offense a chance to score. So it should be a very exciting game this week. Again, we're going to conference play in the Pioneer League. It's our conference opener for both teams, and a lot riding on the line of the very first, uh, uh, with the very first game of the conference. I uh, hope to see you there. Go Hatters! Well, that's all for today. Thanks again for tuning in, and don't forget to tag us on Twitter and Instagram with your questions and comments. I'm Taylor Patrizzi, and I'll see you next time.